Okay, this is part two of the one I started about who our God is. Our God, singular. Not gods. I hope I established that. That we have one God. He's the same guy he's always been. When Jesus came along, he was not asking anyone to believe in someone new. He was not asking anyone to believe in something new because he did teach the law. And he ushered in the new covenant, which is something new. It's something the eternal God always wanted for us. It's the problem was us. It was always with us. Because he's long-suffering, he allowed us to go through all these changes of believing in, in ourself and doing it our way and, and getting the law and getting judges and getting kings and all these things. He did this to establish a track record so that his testimony can stand up alongside the testimony of man's efforts and show that, yes, there is only one way to go, and that is God's way, the one and only God. So like I say, Jesus brought in the new covenant upon his death and his resurrection, but he didn't ask you to believe in anyone new. There was no one new. There was no one new on the scene. There was only your God manifested as that man. God the Father came as that man, his own son. Yes, the son of his love, Paul called him in Colossians 1.13. So, like I say, I hope you watched the first one. So I'm going to start right off from 2 Samuel 22, 31-32 in the Lexham English Bible. This God, his way is blameless. The promise of Yahweh is flawless. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God apart from Yahweh? And who is a rock apart from our God? You know, there's all kinds of things you can probably see yourself when you're looking at this and when you're reading the Bible. I don't claim to have the whole thing because I can't, I can't fit all this into the things we see. I, I'm sure if you study the Bible, you see that it's overwhelming some of the information that comes at you. You have to focus on one thing. But just little things like the individual references. His way. Even the word Yahweh, the name Yahweh, means the self-existent one or the one who exists. He is a shield who take refuge in him. Even the word who, it has to do with an individual. He is a rock. So this is establishing or continuing what I started on in part one. And I'm going forward to get to the identity of our God that we, we worship as the person of Jesus Christ. The second one is from Isaiah 36, and this is in the World English Bible. Again, Isaiah 36, starting in verse 15. And this is a king that's trying to stop somebody. It says, don't let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh. Don't let Hezekiah make you trust in the one who is. Saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us. That's what he's saying, Hezekiah is saying. This city won't be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, Yahweh will deliver us. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered their lands from the hand of the king of Assyria? Remember, he's a conquering king. He's wiping out people left and right, and all these nations have gods. As if you saw in the first part one, you'll see that I talked about that. Whenever it's God's plural, it's always in the negative. It's always in reference to the gods of the nations, the heathens, the non-believing people, the people who are not of God, the people who are not of Israel. So this is this is the king of Assyria speaking. I'll just start that part again. Have any of the gods of the nations? Because I'm making a point here. He's making a point that they have all these gods and they couldn't deliver their gods couldn't deliver from my hand. I still got my way. So he's going to make a point in that reference of they got gods and Israel only has one God. So how do you think he's going to do it when they couldn't do it? So check this out. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered their lands from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Always multiple, always plural. Who are they among all the gods of these countries that have delivered their country out of my hand? That Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. He's asking a question. He's saying, they're great gods. They're mighty gods. They're a bunch of gods. If they can't do it, this one God can't do it. Sorry, it's not going to happen. 
See, that's the point of view they had. People just, if you don't have the spirit, you can't comprehend this. It doesn't make sense to you. There's, there's, a, there's a connection that's made between two individuals, whether it's on this world or from this world to the spirit that came to this world as a person of Jesus Christ who now lives here as a spirit of Jesus Christ. And when you make a connection with him, that is a spiritual connection. And you know that and no one can shake you off of that. It's just like if somebody tried to tell someone you love and you have that connection, try to tell you that that person is not who they are, you're not going to blow that off. You're not going to get offended. You're not going to worry about it because you know who they are and you know they know who you are because you have a connection. But with God, it's so much deeper. It's so much more profound. When you know your God, you know him, and there is no other. There's nothing like that. That's why I ask you. We ask you to pursue this because it doesn't happen by accident. He says, when you search for me... With all your heart, you will find me. It doesn't happen by accident, folks. I'm sorry. That's not how it works. He wants people who want him. I'm not saying a religious aspect, all that religious stuff that says you got to serve him and earn this and get. No, it's just, it's a natural outpouring of your spirit. Once you find out how amazing this God is and it's him that did it and you have everything and he's the one who gave it to you. You can't help but want to get closer to him. You can't help but want to get to know him. He's no longer a thing. He is no longer just a means by which you accomplish things or get goodies or get stuff. Like this king here, if he believed in a God, he would believe in whatever God he thought did him good. But he, he believed in himself. Then he's looking at the other nations. They had their gods because what they didn't really believe in was God himself. They didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe in their savior. They believed in the one who provided benefits as opposed to the one who provided himself, his very spirit, to come and commune with them. And again, that's what we're encouraging you to get in connection with. It's amazing. You just don't know what you're missing if you think that God is, is around the corner waiting to give you something if you could just get it together. or And, you know, he's waiting around the corner to smack you if you screw up. It has nothing to do with those things. Nothing to do with either one of those. There's a third way. It's just being with him in his presence all the time, getting closer, getting to know this amazing God who from the very beginning before there was anything had a thought and that thought was you and he decided to create this whole world so he could put you in it just so he could know you. Not just so he could alternately smack you or bless you, but so he could know you. He wants to know you. That's who this one individual God of all creation wants to do and spend the rest of eternity doing, getting to know you. It's a two-way thing because you're growing and maturing. He is a God that does not change and you will never stop drawing closer to that, getting to know that, that person, that individual that he is. And he will never stop getting to know you because you are growing. At least you will be once you get you tap into that spirit that he has to offer you. The next chunk here is from Jeremiah 6 to 7. And then I skip to verses 10 through 13. And this is, is back to the Lexham English Bible. There is none like you, O Yahweh. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not revere you, O King of the Nations? We have one king, the king of kings, right? That's him right here. For you it is fitting, for among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. That's the end of the first two verses, 6 and 7. Now beginning in 10 through 13. But Yahweh is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. Because of his wrath, the earth quakes, and the nations cannot endure his anger. Thus, you shall say to them, Gods, who did not make the heavens and the earth, will perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He is the maker of the earth by his power, who created the world by his wisdom, by and by his understanding, he stretched out heaven. That's all his he's and him and his and you and your. When he utters his voice, there is a noise of water in the heavens. And he causes the mist to rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. And he causes the wind to go out from his storehouses. 
Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's just amazing. Our God is just, I don't know, I, I just can't add to that. That is just so beautiful to me that he makes it clear there's none beside him. He's the only one, and he does it, and he's glad to do it. And who does he do it for? He does it for you. He does it for you because he loves you. He wants you to see all these things. Next one is from Ezra, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 in the Jewish Publication Society. It says it very similar to the King James Version. I just like this version. So Ezra 1, verses 2 and 3. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord, the God of heaven, given me. And he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whosoever there is among you of all his people, his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And I don't even know if anyone's going to be able to see this. I see it so, so bold. And hopefully when you see it written in front of you in that way, it'll come across. But he's talking about building the house of God, and we know we can't contain him. You know, he's, uh, the heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. But they do these things to honor him the best they can. And it says to build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. He is the God. <laughs> I don't know. I just that is just so profound to me that. Uh, I guess I won't try to explain it because I guess it is, I'm already saying it's the only spiritual thing that can show you that and I can't show it to you, but it's saying very clearly who he is. He is, he is the God. He is the God of Israel. And that's another thing you might do sometimes. Just type up the God of Israel and, and as a phrase in your search engine or in your, like if you have an e-sort or some program like that and just see how many times it says the God of Israel. Well, you're Israel by faith in God, who is Jesus, who is God. When you put your faith in him and the God of Israel is your God, that's how you become, that's how you become, an, uh, for lack of a better term, an Israelite. You're, you're of the Israel of God by that faith. And he's always been the same. He's always been the same. It's just then it was through the law and it was temporary and now it's through faith and it's forever. It is forever. So it's established this God who made everything. He is the only God. He is the God of Israel. And two quick scriptures here from Acts 10.36 and then Acts 17.24, both KJV. Says the word, this is Peter speaking, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. And then Paul says in Acts 17.24, God that made the world and all things therein, Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. That's your God, folks. It's him and him alone. It never was anyone else. It's only been him. It'll always be him. Get to know him. And like I say, you might act a little goofy like me because you'd be excited because it's just amazing. When he shows you these things, he shows you, not them. And then you have to figure out who's talking to me. You know who's talking to you. It's your father, it's your savior, it's your best friend, it's your brother, it's everything you need. It's just your God. That's all it is. It's God. In Jesus' name, amen.